So you've got the job interview and you're lining yourself up for it. Uh, you think you're all prepared. And then at the very start, they floor you with this question. Why do you want to be A? Or tell me a little bit about yourself. And so you panic and you start talking about the school you went to, the hobbies you enjoy. Or if you're asked, why do you want to be A? Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, so the other day I was coaching one of my clients who wants to be a police officer. And she started talking about, I've always wanted to be a police officer. Um, it's a job where I can give something back to the community. No two days are the same. I just really like helping people. Oh my goodness, please give it a rest. Um, I asked another individual who I'm coaching at the moment who wants to get into firearms. And he just said, well, I'm just waiting for the assessment day and I'll see what comes of it. Just know, folks, just know uh, that is not the way to prepare. So, uh, welcome to uh, another one of my videos. I'm Brendan from Blue Light, and over the past several years, I've been coaching and supporting people to succeed in the police recruitment process. And here's something I've realized from talking to my clients. It doesn't matter whether it's police, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a dentist, I want to be an architect, I want to work in retail, I want to work in hotels. It doesn't matter what it is, you need to work out your why. You've got to work out your why. And I'll tell you a little bit about what happened once we did a little bit of work with my client who was doing the uh, no two days are the same, want to give something back to the community. I've always wanted to be a... We did a little bit of work on her why and oh my goodness, she's going to so nail her interview because she's got the perfect answer lined up. So one of the things that we need to do is work out exactly where we are now. So have you ever done this? Just worked out, where am I now? Okay, in my life, where am I now? Uh, emotionally, career-wise, um, in terms of my training, my education, where am I now and what does it mean? And then we need to start thinking about where I want to be. Where do I want to be? Where do I want to be? What does success look like in two years time, in five years time, in one year's time, in six months time? It doesn't matter, you set the time scale. I'm not gonna say you've gotta do this, but that's where we are now, that's where we want to be. So you're only gonna get there if you know all the different steps to take to get to your destination. Now that journey's not gonna work out perfectly, but you need to start moving in that direction and not just hope for the best. There's a lot of preparation that you need to do and a lot of work that you need to do, a lot of execution and action that you need to take to get yourself to that point. But before we start that journey, we need to work out why. Why is it important that you achieve this position, this career, this job? And it's a really, really tough question. I've asked this question of my clients, of, of hundreds, thousands of my clients now, in my seminars, in my one-to-one -one coaching sessions, in my webinars, in all the services I've been delivering, even going back to when I was an inspector, uh, sergeant in the police service, I've been in the Cheshire Constabulary, the Bermuda Police, I've been in Greater Manchester Police, I retired as an inspector, but a lot of my time was spent supporting my teams because I spent a little bit of time halfway through my career um, in training and um, uh, adult education, uh, looking at training police officers, I went on to train trainers and then I went on to train the trainers of trainers. Um, and I got really interested in assessment systems and competency-based frameworks, all of that kind of stuff. But the, the thing that always puzzled me was how, uh, how unprepared people are generally for that question. Why do you want this position? Why do you want this job? Why do you want to be a sergeant? Why do you want to be a firearms officer? Why do you want to be in the CID? And it's the same for anything in life. Why do you want to be? And when they're asking you that question, tell me a little bit about yourself. They don't want to bear hear about your, your hobbies, where you go on holiday, where you were raised, what school you went to. They want to hear about your journey that has led to them, to you being sat in front of them. So it starts off with where, are, where am I now? Where do I want to be and why? So um, I'll share with you what happened with my client who did the, you know, no two days are the same, want to put something back in the same community. Listen, that's what the books tell you to say. And it's total nonsense. I've been an interviewer, and if anyone ever came out with stuff like that, I, I'd, I'd be looking for the sick, sick bull. I mean, really, cliched, vague nonsense that tells me nothing about you. So I started asking her, so why is it important that you be a police officer? 
And uh, she never told me any of this before. She, she started talking about her relatives and how one of her uncles was a detective chief inspector who worked on uh, really serious crime, um, murders, uh, missing children, you know, some really, really serious crime throughout his time. And uh, so she started talking about how he was inspirational. Well, why is it important for you to um, have that sort of inspirational person to look up to? And she said, well, because I, I want to be like him. Well, why is that important? And we dug several layers, you know, I, I kept asking that question. Yeah, but why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Because what I want to get from her, what I wanted to get from her was an emotional connection. Because you're more likely to succeed in your mission to get that position if you've got emotional connection to it. You know, I just want to be a doctor. I want to be a dentist. I want to work in retail. I want to work in hotels. I want to be an architect. You know, those are just pipe dreams unless you are emotionally connected to it. If you're emotionally connected to that vision, that concrete vision of what your future is going to look like, then you are going to find a way to make it happen. And so what eventually she said was, um, what particularly inspired me was how my uncle was able to give closure to people and what that felt like for them and what it felt like for him. And looking back on his career, he was so proud that he managed to give closure to people in the investigation of serious crimes. And I want to be like him. And then we went on further to talk about her past and what she'd done to move herself closer to her goal, uh, the volunteering that she'd done, uh, the work in the courts that she'd done, the work volunteering in schools. She's done an amazing amount of things, uh, part-time work, uh, the, the, the hobbies where she's developed team working skills, problem solving skills, and she's 18. She's 18 years old. Um, what she didn't know was actually she'd been doing exactly what I'm talking about now. She knew where she was, she knew where she wanted to get to, she'd just not worked out the why. So once we've worked out the why, we know exactly why our um, dream needs to be, uh, where our passion lies for it, we can then start working out how am I going to get there? How am I going to get there? So the first step forward is always the best one, you know, just do something. Don't just sit there reading books on how to achieve my dream career, because I can tell you this now, um, execution and action trumps knowledge every day of the week, every day of the week. Those people who've been successful, like myself, you know, I had 28 years in the police service, worked in three different forces, an attachment with the Home Office, Everything I wanted to achieve, I knew exactly why I wanted to achieve it. I could imagine myself in that position. It was such a powerful, concrete vision for me, and I made it happen. Many of my colleagues got to the end of their careers and they've just looked back and said, I wish I'd done, I wish I'd done. I did everything I wanted to do, and beyond retirement, I've been doing the most amazing things. I've got to speak at conferences in this country, in Munich, in Budapest. I've worked on uh, with the European Union on projects as an, on the International Advisory Board around community engagement and problem solving, enabling citizens. I work with police forces and councils around um, supporting their specialist officers in respect of community engagement and problem solving. So I've done some amazing things since, and all because I want to do it. These are all things I want to do. So I've known my why, I've known my passion, I've known exactly how to get there. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to share with you now uh, what you need to be doing to get to that point. So you know why now, you've asked yourself that question, why is it so important? Now we need to start looking at how you're going to get there, how you're going to get there. And, and it needs you to invest in more than just the books that are out there, the books that are out there on how to succeed in a job interview. I've read some of them and oh my goodness, okay, you know, who am I to say? But they're awful, I mean, they're awful. When I read things like, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, I have, the following experience and qualifications. I believe I can, and then to just regurgitate the job specification, uh, I believe I can bring X, Y, and Z to your company. It's telling me nothing about you as an authentic, real, emotional person. It's just telling me a load of bold claims, but nothing about how you've got to that position where you're sat in front of me on that interview panel. I want to know about your journey. And here's the really good thing about this model. This is where I am, this is where I want to be. This is why I want to be in that position. And if you, if you are here now and that position that you're going to get interviewed for is in a year's time, you are now going to take this journey where every day you're going to take action. Every day you're going to do something that's going to take you close to that goal. 
Um, and on a lot of my videos, uh, especially for my clients, I talk about the things that they need to do to prepare themselves for that journey, to take each step of that journey. Because once you get to that position now where you're at that interview panel and they ask you, tell me a little bit about yourself or tell me why you want to be a, doesn't matter what it is, tell me what architect, you know, school teacher, doctor, dentist, police officer, firefighter, it doesn't matter. You can now talk about this amazing journey that you've had preparing yourself for the moment when you're sat on that seat in front of them. And at the end of that journey, you can tell them about this journey, you can end with, and here I am today, getting ready for the next chapter in my life, my perfect career, and then you can, that's the end of your answer. Far more emotionally connected, far more authentic, far more real, that's what they're looking for. That is what they're looking for. I can promise you that. I've spoken to so many of my friends who are in business who are so disappointed at the quality of candidates in front of them. And when I told them about this model and I told them that this is, you know, if someone brought this to you, they'd say I'd employ them. I'd just take them. <laughs> I'd take them straight away because they've, they clearly have done their homework. They've clearly got a passion for the role and they're clearly being driven towards something that they want and have done something about it. And the thing is, there's so many resources out there now. There are vast amounts of resources. Um, we've got uh, YouTube, we've got Google, Twitter, LinkedIn. There is no excuse for not preparing correctly for your dream job. So the thing is, it's not resources that's a problem, it's resourcefulness. It's resourcefulness. I mean, just in my sector, the police sector, the amount of people I ask, you know, who's the chief constable? And they go, I don't know. And you want a job with that force and you don't even know who the chief constable is? So your first step is to find out as much as you can about that company. The woman I was coaching the other day, the 18-year-old, uh, talked about how she got a part-time job at Starbucks because she wanted to get experience of working with people in a customer service uh, front-facing position where she'd be able to work with a, a strong team that's got a strong brand behind them. And the first question she got asked was, tell me what you know about coffee. Oh, sorry, it's the second question. They asked her, why do you want this job first? Uh, and then tell me, about, tell me about coffee. What do you know about coffee? Um, and she didn't know anything. She kind of bluffed her way through it. Uh, she got the position, part-time position, but she was amazed that she did because she didn't know anything about coffee. She sort of talked about coffee. I mean, when she looked back on it, after it, going through this model, she just thought, what, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? I was going for a job in a coffee shop and I'd not even researched Starbucks or coffee. So the, there's your first step, folks. Uh, resources is not the problem. It's your resourcefulness. It's time to start getting resourceful because there's so many resources out there. You're watching one of them now. I'm one of those resources. I'm connecting with you in a way that I hope is going to have an impact on your life because this is how you're going to get your dream career, folks. It doesn't matter what the job is. You need to know what your end goal is going to be, why you want it, and then you're going to make it your mission, your absolute mission to achieve that position. You may not get it first time, but you're going to learn and you are eventually going to get it because if someone else has done if someone else has got that job, then you can get that job as well. But it's going to take work. You know, there's no magic bullet here. There's no silver bullet where I'm going to go, you know, I can show you how to get your dream job overnight. No, look, I'm going to, I can show you the way, but you've got to do the hard work. I get so many people. I've got a Facebook group. I'll put the link in below. You know, even if you don't want to join the police, just join it and just see the sort of things that we talk about. There's almost 8,000 people in that support group um, who talk about their journey. And I'll often pass comment about what they need to do next. Um, so, you know, there's, there's so many people out there who, uh, and uh, like I said, I, I keep asking them these questions. Who's the chief constable? What are the priorities? What are the values of this organisation? And they don't know. And they get a bit of a kick up the backside from me because this is the sort of resourcefulness that you need to be demonstrating. Get out there and find out more about the business that you want to join, about the sector that you want to join. Go and volunteer with them. Uh, connect with people on LinkedIn, Twitter, find out something about their values, their culture, what it means to work for them, uh, what your career progression will look like, what experience you know do you need to start collecting now to make you um, extremely um, uh, employable so you can just plug in so you can just plug into their company that 's what you should be working towards. Uh, make it your mission and take action every day. Every day, without fail, 
do something that's going to take you close to your goal, that isn't just picking up a book and reading something. Because execution and action trumps knowledge every day of the week. Take action, be obsessive, become absolutely obsessive about uh, getting that future position. So behind me there, uh, there's a photograph, uh, two photographs. There's one of me, uh, let's see if I can point to it, uh, that one there. Uh, that's me when I first joined the Bermuda Police. Uh, we're all sat there in our shorts. Uh, the one above it is me in Special Branch. Now, I spent three years in the Bermuda Police and I came back because I wanted to continue my career in the UK. Um, I was told when I got there that if you're interested in joining Special Branch, it's probably going to take you about five years, three years, maybe four years, but probably about five years. You're going to have to do your time in CID. Then you're going to have to do this, do the other. Bullshit. Bullshit five years. I knew exactly what I wanted and I did something every day that took me closer towards that goal. I was in Special Branch within 18 months. So all the rules that people will tell you about, all the things that people will tell you that you need to do or you can't do because, don't listen to them. Focus on taking massive amounts of action on a daily basis. And that's what I did. It's what I've done for everything I've wanted to achieve in my life. It's been a rule. Every day, take action. Not just action, but massive amounts of action. That's what you need to do, folks. So if you want to find out more, uh, check the links below. This is how to become successful. Actually, it's one of the things you need to do to start becoming successful in your search for your ideal dream career or job. I'm going to be making a lot more videos about this in the future because, look, I, I took a look on YouTube the other day um, for advice and guidance uh, for job interviews and I'm so, so disappointed. Oh my goodness, it's awful, awful stuff out there. Awful. It's the sort of stuff that I cringed at. Who makes this stuff up? Look, I come from the world, the real world of helping people become successful and whether it's for the police or any other sector, it doesn't matter. We're all human, we all want to hear a story, someone's emotional, authentic, real story of how they got to be sat on the seat answering questions in front of the interviewer. So, hope you found this useful, folks. Um, I, I hope this is going to be impactful on your life in terms of what you want to achieve as a career, as a job. So, if you've got any questions or comments, please do let me know. Just put them in the, the blurb below there. I'll do my very best to answer them, whether this was on YouTube or on Facebook or anywhere else. Um, and if you want to see more of my videos and you're watching this on YouTube, click that subscribe button. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, then please do like it. And please do, you know, join that group. It, it's for the police in the main, but I'm going to start expanding because, you know, the success I've brought to my clients uh, who want to join the police... Um, and over a quarter, just over a quarter of all the police officers joining in England and Wales at the moment are joining through me. Wow. <laughs> uh, so let's expand that. Let's, let's, let's help people become even more successful. And it doesn't matter what it is you want to achieve. Let me help you get there. I shall speak to you soon. Um, and if you're thinking, what do I do next? Do something. Take some action. Do it now. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye for now.